Um, okay, recording. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to church this morning at Trinity Lutheran Church in Lockport, New York. Today is Pentecost Sunday, May the 31st. We are into a brand new season. The colors are red. And uh, we are also anticipating being able to open up our worship to the congregation soon in a limited way. As uh, in New York State, we have gotten the go-ahead to assemble in groups of 10 or less. And so next Sunday, June the 7th, we will be open on Sunday morning for worship, and we will also have a repeat of the same service live on Wednesday, June the 10th. And that will be our pattern. We'll worship on Sunday morning, and we'll do the same service on the Wednesday of that following week. We do ask the congregation to sign up to let us know by calling the church office ahead of time so that we know how many people to expect. We don't want to uh, go past our limit, and uh, please call early in the week and let us know if you will be here on either Sunday or the following Wednesday. In our prayers this morning, uh, as we follow divine service setting number two in the hymnal, beginning at page 167, in our prayers we include families who are grieving, we include the family and friends of Damon Say. Uh, he uh, was the brother of Elena Moeller, and he died this past month. Uh, also the family and friends of Eileen Chapman, who died earlier this week. We're praying for people who are ill or are recovering. Mark Christensen had surgery, and he is recovering at Kenmore Mercy. Sharon Chunko has been hospitalized. She is at Buffalo General. And we continue to pray for Rose Wiltberger as she battles the COVID-19 disease. And also we have added to our prayer list Lorraine Lockman. Please stand as we begin our worship by singing hymn 503. We will be singing verses 1 and 4 of O Day Full of Grace.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, redeem us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please turn to your bulletins as we speak the words of the intro. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful. And, and kindle, kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In, in wisdom have you made them all. The, the earth is full of your creatures. creatures. These all look to you, to give them their food in due season. When, when you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the
readings for the day of Pentecost is from Numbers chapter 11. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. You may remain seated as we sing Psalm, six, Psalm 25 responsibly with the
And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They were filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words, for these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prosper, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text of the Gospel on this Pentecost Sunday is from the text of the sermon on this Pentecost Sunday is from the Gospel reading, John chapter 7, where Jesus foreshadows the coming of the Holy Spirit. In New York State, we've been under the stay-at-home order now for about two and a half months. Gradually, we're beginning to go outside more. There are more shopping trips, more takeout food trips. I think at one point, Lori and I had gone about two weeks without ever going to a store. That's just how shut down we were. Maybe you've had the same experience that we had of searching your house in the midst of a shopping drought. We found ourselves rummaging through the fridge, down in the freezer in the basement, on the shelves of the pantry, finding something to eat. We were hungry. But rather than go out to the store or to a restaurant, we were turning inward, looking inside for food. And I never knew how much food we had packed away in the far recesses of the pantry. And I began to appreciate the inventory of all of those non-perishables that we had on hand. But that lifestyle of isolation, that was no way to live. That was merely survival. Pentecost is a church festival that turns our eyes outward. In the book of Acts, we see people from many nations gathering in Jerusalem, and the Holy Spirit speaking this message of salvation to them in many of their native languages, and then sending out these new disciples to the ends of the earth. This Pentecostal outpouring of the Spirit turns our eyes outward as we celebrate the mission of God and our place in his kingdom on earth. These devout Jews from the various provinces of the Roman Empire took that good news of Jesus back to their scattered peoples, where some synagogues then became Christian, and some homes became house churches. And in their mixed societies back home, there were Gentile people got to hear the grace of a loving God, and they became children of Abraham by faith, and that they were enrolled in this new covenant between God and man. The first Pentecost was the birth of a Christian, of a church family, who were called out of this world, and who were gathered around Jesus and around his sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Son. But as much as the Holy Spirit sends us outward with the gospel, there's another dimension to Pentecost, and it is, it is a dynamic we may not always celebrate, as it turns our eyes inward. It asks us to meditate on the depth of the Spirit before we celebrate the breadth of his work. And this is the dynamic that is mentioned in the gospel reading this morning. The Holy Spirit is that gift of living water that flows from within. Now one thing to keep straight here on this Pentecost Sunday is the timeline of our readings today. Pentecost, that happened in Acts chapter 2, was 10 days after Jesus had ascended into heaven. And the festival that had brought Jews from foreign lands into Jerusalem was the festival that Jews call Shavuot, or the Festival of Weeks. And it was a spring harvest. It was a festival that also was combined with the celebration of Moses receiving the Ten Commandments from God at the top of Mount Sinai. Now the festival that Jesus was attending in Jerusalem, in our Gospel reading in John 7, was a different festival. It had happened, oh, probably a year or so earlier than Pentecost. It was during the festival of tabernacles, or tents, or shelters, that took place in the fall. And that celebrated God's protection of Israel during their 40-year journey through the wilderness. 
Now, the reason that these two different readings from two different festivals are paired up on Pentecost is because they illustrate the connection of Jesus, who foretells the power of the Holy Spirit within, and it connects that with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, who works faith inside of us and then sends us out with his power. So in our Gospel reading, let's see how Jesus emphasizes the depths of the Spirit. These crowds have, as I said, gathered in Jerusalem for a spring festival, or a fall festival. After the gathering of the fall harvest, God's people have celebrated by coming together, and they dwell in these little shelters or booths. It is the last and greatest day of this Feast of Tabernacles. And Israel is focused on remembering God's provision. And they're recalling how the Lord had provided for their ancestors as they meandered their way through the wilderness, trusting that God would keep providing, not just there, but also in the promised land. That land that was supposed to be flowing with milk and honey. And so the theme of that Feast of Tabernacles is whether wandering in the wilderness or living in that land, God provides for his people. He is their resource within. He is, so to speak, their pantry that never goes empty. As this feast is coming to an end, Jesus stands up. The daily processions that mark that Feast of Tabernacles, daily processions taking water from the Pool of Siloam up to the temple, now finish. And yet on this day, when the human actions are ending, the divine action is beginning. Jesus now speaks of a living water that he is going to pour into the lives of his people. This is his gift of the Spirit, the paraclete, the helper, the comforter, the counselor. And Jesus is promising this. Later, after his death, after his resurrection, and after his ascension back into heaven, at the now spring festival of Pentecost, Jesus will send that spirit, and then God's people will have an unceasing supply of this living water constantly flowing from within them. Now this isn't the first time that Jesus has spoken about living water. Earlier in John's Gospel, when Jesus spoke with the Samaritan woman at the well, he offered her this living water. And it changed her life. She was an outcast sinner. But now, with that living water, she had become a bold proclaimer of Jesus and of his grace and of his forgiveness. What was said back then to her in private is now at the festival of tabernacles being proclaimed by Jesus in public. What was divinely spoken back in Samaria is now being miraculously uttered by his disciples in Jerusalem. And in all of those cases, there is a future harvest in view. With the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus opens the eyes of his disciples so they see that there is a field ready for as now the Samaritans return to the town, they come to the well and they greet Jesus. With the people of Israel at the Festival of Tabernacles, Jesus opens their eyes to a future harvest that will come when the Spirit is poured out to them at Pentecost. In all of these cases, the emphasis is on the living water of the Spirit. Yes, Pentecost celebrates the outreach of the Spirit to all nations. But first, it celebrates the inreach of the Spirit among those who believe. Whether they are in public or in private. Whether they are an Israelite or a Samaritan. Whether they are included in the community or excluded from that community. Jesus gives them living water gift of the Holy Spirit, from whom divine life is going to continue to flow. Now by nature, when 
we speak of what's inside of us as mortal human beings, we realize that is going to fail. And Jesus puts no honor on what comes out of the natural human being. Jesus says in Matthew, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. But the Holy Spirit changes hearts by uniting us with Jesus so that our hearts are now softened, strengthened, and conformed to his. And from that changed and redeemed heart comes this living water of the Holy Spirit. Now we may be at this time in our lives battling boredom or loneliness in the days of our isolation. But God's love is not even bounded by our experiences of separation. Even as we live through a pandemic, not of a virus, but a pandemic of sin. Christ has carried all of our sins to his very profound isolation he experienced at the cross so that he might be our salvation in every place of our life. He promises us the living water of the Holy Spirit, who, as we confess in the Nicene Creed, proceeds from the Father and from the Son so that we might become his own. His power, his truth, his calling is to be in relationship with Jesus. This is a resource inside of us now that never fails. Faith in Christ is a gift from above that never goes dry, in season or out of season. Nourish you in good times and bad. Amen. Congregation, please stand as we pray the needs of our congregation and the needs of all people in the prayer of the church.
healing for Mark Christensen, for Sharon Chung. We pray for Lorraine Lockman and for Rose Wilbur. We pray for all of our parishioners who are confined to nursing care, assisted living facilities. Answer your people, O Lord, and deliver them from infirmities and grief by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your word endures forever. Bless us to be united in doctrine and to return to the fellowship of your table, that we may confess Christ boldly and live together in faith and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear your people for the sake of him who loved us even to death and who calls to himself all who will be saved. Grant us those things that we need, and for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now present our offerings collected to the Lord as we sing the offertory on page 176.
Go in peace. God has poured out his spirit upon us. Thanks to God.